So that'll give me 2d6 here. All right. Can you make it? Uh, um, let's find out. And don't forget, you still also need the opposition roll for Connor's roll. Yeah, we'll get back to that. I'm going to pull up some oh. stats here. Well, that's crap. That is. I could go oh, ahead bunch. and re-roll this right now. To declare this your favorite boat? Uh, <laughs> I haven't, but I could go ahead and say vehicles on the river. No, you've got to specify a specific vehicle. Oh, dear. Uh, I don't think this is my favorite. You, you don't get any sympathy from me. My favorite coach has been impounded. Oh. There we go. I'm using my knack reroll, and that is going to be uh, two successes, and you will get the assist die. Are you a team player? No. All right, guys, good news. Our cap has been raised from D4 to D8. I am also going to guard. Lael is also technically here. Okay, uh, you have a second act. Oh, your second action was to guard. Okay, that was good. Uh, well, uh, I guess we're going to see the fallout from Connor's uh, negotiation. Yes. Yes, you are. Uh, sorry, just trying to pull up. This is a clarification stats. question. Is that a role yeah. that Anon has to make every turn? Um. So, yeah, that is a good question. So the way that we normally handle this, right, is that one person who is steering the boat or steering the vehicle is making their vehicle rolls, and then what is it? If they fail, then everyone's capped to to their own uh, vehicle. That's oh, their own the vehicle. Way, that's usually the way it works. And yes, he has to make that roll every turn. Otherwise, right. it's an uncontrolled vehicle. He just needs one success. But if he gets one success, then you guys are also are capped to his vehicle skill, or he, he assists us, which gives us a D A. Oh, so everyone would get a when D8 he to rolls their roles. and he succeeds, you have the D8 bonus. When he fails, you have your own vehicle die. Which, if you have no vehicle dice, that's a D4. If you right. have a D4 vehicle dice, it's still D4. Otherwise, yeah, it is whatever it is. Right. Uh, the guys who are invading us have uh, uh, have vehicles of their own skill. In other words, they have the home turf advantage. Welcome to Ironclaw. Indeed. They're also acrobats. I don't know if that matters in this uh, case. It matters when you fall, when they fall. When they fall. So yep. Acrobat reduces falling damage and, most importantly, lets you move funny. You know, you know that rule where you can dash and stride or stride and dash? If you have acrobat, you can dash in the middle place or you can stride in the middle of a dash. Ooh, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, here we go. Sorry for the delay. This is the this is contesting Connor's negotiation. Against the guy wearing colors. So when he says, uh, Connor gives an ultimatum. What was your what was your challenge, Connor? Let us pass. We I have no personal vendetta against Eudora. It looks like their leader failed. So their leader yep. will give pause, is the standard rule where he will take a focus turn. Uh, wait, he can also stride if he wants to. And uh, yep. you can have him say something, you know, as a response. Yep. And his response will be, um, this craft is illegal and we are, we order you to surrender your cargo or die on these waters. But he's not doing anything. And that's a focus turn for him. Wow. They just want the cargo boss. They don't know. They don't know who you are. Well, uh, hopefully the cargo doesn't include the war wagon. No, it includes the war wagon. The war wagon. The cargo is the war wagon. <laughs> Yeah, they they want the war wagon and the gun. Uh, so what say you, sir? Are you are you going to are we going to shed blood to protect this? The wolves are preparing. They've been readying their muskets. They're like two rounds away from them being fire ready. Yeah, they're on. Uh, Connor, it's your. It's all on your head. Would you? May, would you render their lives forfeit for material goods? You that worldly? You know what? They can have them. Oh, you're gonna surrender it? 
for the lives of your of your men. Yes. Oh, all right. Um. All right. Give us your surrender speech. <laughs> oh, now I have to make a surrender speech, huh? <laughs> it doesn't have to be an elegant speech. Um. But yeah, what are what are the terms and conditions of your surrender here? Um. In these harsh, war torn days, it is all I can do to save the lives of me and my men and those who have entrusted me with their lives. Surely, this is the best course of action to give you these, this cargo in order that we may still live. The. Uh, Not my best speech. <laughs> No, no, no. That was better than I was expecting, honestly. I didn't... I said speech. I was being funny. But no, that's a good speech. So, yeah. All right. Um, He looks at you, and, and he'll nod, and he'll say, um, I can see that you are taking account of the lives, um, that you're obviously in charge here. What you are doing is illegal. However, we have matters to attend to, and so... Um, I suppose. Uh, I'm just trying to well, think. Well, the shoes running they're... are swimming that way. If you want to go get them. Oh yeah, the shrews. Um, and Dan. And Dan, who is swimming in the other direction. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I doubt that they even know that Dan left, and they might not even see the shrews either. Um. So yeah. I think in this case, uh, so he's going to look at you and he says, good, well, um, we will uh, escort you to the shore where we will evaluate your cargo and seize and uh, seize it. Um, and that's the thing. Would they arrest you? I mean, really, you guys are bandits. And they are here oh. under Dolaro authority. We we agreed to surrender the cargo, but not ourselves. I think it's what you want to say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if they want to take us, uh, I mean, Connor, are you going to let them arrest us? Is the question. That's true. You know, they I mean, don't even okay. the, the cargo you may have, but not us. That's what you're but not us. Say. Yeah. And we're getting ahead of ourselves because they don't even know what the cargo is. So I think before he's going to make any declarative statements about your freedom, he wants to know who you are and what you're doing here. So maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves in terms of the negotiation. Right. So That's words, the first he, question. He points at the guy and says, and that probably makes the guy blink twice. When wow, you use big words. You're in negotiation. So he mm. might, you know, say, who are you? And, you know, which also doesn't say good for that guy because, Connor, you're you're. You're displaying your herald, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So the guy doesn't immediately recognize you, which is not that weird. He might not be a herald or anything like that. He just knows you're a noble. So when that guy's turn comes up, does he tell his men to stand down or does he uh, um, say something else? He's going to tell them to hold. And in this okay, case, so they would... Basically, all, all just take focus. ready uh, or focus turns, I suppose. Yeah, he, if he tells them to hold, then they all focus. It's the easiest thing to do. Drop some focus. Okay, and then he asks who you are. So Indeed. that ends the turn. Uh, yep. I, uh, I assume our guys is, are still unpacking, and then you know our turn will roll around again, and Anonymous has to man the damn boat. Yep, I just got to keep this thing afloat. Hey. Okay, so the boat rocks unsteadily, which shakes us, but doesn't phase the experienced mariners. Indeed, indeed. So any physical okay. moves this round will be limited by your vehicle's dice. Right. Um, so, so, so the boat whoosh, goes unsteadily, and ah, door doctors over there. Um, trying to keep it steady, please. Well, so, so Connor, he asked, "Who the crummy heck are you?" You gonna tell him who you are? Yes, I am Connor Lavera de Ecrevis of Fermarins. Okay, and then we focus. 
So this gets ugly because now it's their turn and they get three actions. Uh, what is the boss going to do? Is he going to once again tell us, give us orders or whatever? Uh, or is he going to mean like like make demands of us? Tell us to do something. Exactly. Yep. It's going to says, <laughs> and a ward poor noble here sneaking across our river in the middle of the night. Uh, well, I'd have you all lay down your arms if you value your lives and tell us what it is that you're transporting so covertly. Yeah, and by the way, remember that when you take focus turns, you can't advance one pace. Just reminding you. I guess I sh they should close into you. at least hurting distance, right? Or they could be walking towards us, you know. Yeah, they want to increase the pressure. Obviously, they yeah. want to maintain control of the situation, so they're all going to move. All up. right, so so they focus in stride. It's our turn. Hey, Doc, can you keep the boat under control? Let's find out. No. Okay, so these guys walk towards us like seasoned pros, and we're sitting here like going, "I don't know what I'm doing." <laughs> Terrible Which this. doesn't help our negotiating position because, like, there's six guys. It's like, okay, um, Connor, what say you? I'm not shedding first blood. I don't plan to either, either, but uh, they uh, probably will arrest you. So say something. Uh, we are here to transport weapons to my family so that we may be better armed for a war effort against the um, Jacoba. Okay, he, he, he asked, uh, he, uh, well, I mean, he asked us if we were going to surrender, right? Oh, yeah, we'll surrender. So we're surrendering. Well, none of us have any vehicles fighting, do we? Well, except unless we can fight in the air. Okay, but, but you're surrendering? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Godspeed to you, good sir. Uh, I'm leaving. <laughs> mm -hmm. The hell of an argument, by the way. We're bringing guns to arm our people in case we have to fight the Jacoba. We are currently at war with you. I recognize this fact. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, I can find you later. I, I respect your decision to surrender, sir. Stay alive no matter what occurs. I will find you. Uh, and I'm going to leave. I don't know if anyone's going to shoot at me while I try to leave they, the trial guard. They are. Um, he's going to... The commander is going to whistle and say... Um, okay, well, if the boat's in front of us, I would leave this way to increase distance. To increase your distance. That's probably yeah. wise. Um, okay. Now, these guys are not shown on the map. There's three uh, individuals with crossbows. Um, and I'm going to say that at this point, you're just within... Well, how, how long is this? I'm thinking medium range, but it might be beyond that. Yeah, no, it would be uh, medium range, and yeah, uh, uh, yeah it would be medium range. So, right, so you can take your D12 range. Right, no, they'll, they'll take, yeah, five of them will shoot. The odds are low, but one of them might hit, so go for it. Indeed, indeed. So here we go. And we'll say that they've had, they've been aiming at you, so they're going to take D12s, but it's going to be 2D6 and a D12 three times. Here's the first one. Okay. Boom, boom. Dodge. All right, nice. Second one, boom, boom. Dodge. Also nice, and last, boom, boom. All right. Okay. I mean, they could have hit. The, they got close, but nice. I'm faster. Yep. You can hear the twanging and the whizzing of arrows, but none of them can catch your graceful escape. Yep. Um. All right. Uh, that leaves the good doctor, who I don't know if he wants to get arrested. Uh, well, I sure as hell can't swim. <laughs> and uh, the doctor is not looking forward to fighting his countrymen either. You can declare, uh, you, you could try to convince them that you're clergy and thus are not beholden to noble law, but only clerical law. That's probably what I'm up to right now. Yep. No, I'm a priest. I'm not with these guys. I'm with God. <laughs> I, I think at this point, though, uh, the bag's going in the water. By the way, it's just it's just at the bottom of the river now. Oh no! You're tossing the necromancer trappings. Yeah, no, this uh, I, I ain't getting caught with that. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, Quick, end you of the focus of the scene anyway. You could have given them to me, but 
Uh, no, I'm actually I'm glad you're actually throwing them overboard. Yeah, I, I was never going to go down the path of Necromancer anyway. Aww. Honestly, the river, pretty good. Okay. All right, so you're tossing the bag. You said you're guarding. Um, our wolves are ready to fire, and actually they're going to start fanning out and putting some distance between themselves and... Uh, Wow, this is not working. There we go. Boom. Okay. okay yeah, I don't so... know if they're uh, if they're gonna fight because Connor surrendered. Uh, I will attempt to maybe negotiate with our wolves. Is that all right? Okay. Um. Yes. Yeah. You can negotiate with them. Well, it seems okay. like they don't want to be. So. So here's where their heads are at. Um. You guys are allies of theirs currently, but they do not want to be thrown into a Dolaro prison. Like this deal seemed good for them up to the point where they were going to get paid, but now they are looking it looks like they're about to be taken into custody they're not cool with that and they have finished priming their weapons and they look like again callie is the one you'd want to talk to because she's the one who's calling the shots here um and she seems like she does not want to be taken uh, by these individuals so you could try to negotiate with her if you'd like instead of right. guarding uh i will attempt to go ahead and negotiate well i'm probably going to guard and negotiate but um oh okay but go know. reeling for it of course hey no one's going to forget your nickname, Callie. You can't fool yeah. us. Fast I'm just going to look and go, uh, you're nothing of a prize <laughs> compared to Connor. If you escape now, well, they're likely to forget you for the bigger bounty. Um, all right, yeah, make your roll. Hey, two successes. All right. These guys aren't real negotiators. They're just going to be rolling 2d6, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, what is it for resisting negotiation, uh, like inquiry, I think? Yeah. Um, Usually you resist negotiation with negotiation. With negotiation, mm -hmm. right. Well, so I guess they would only really be rolling 1d6, but it's not like that second d6 actually helps them. So... Um, Callie doesn't seem to like this, but she does, uh, take a moment, so they're not going to fire. I mean, yeah, this is a little interesting because they kind of already took their moves. Um, I'm not going to give them focus, um, and they weren't in a position to fire anyway, but she's thinking about this, and, uh, I'd say that you successfully convince her not to open fire on these guys. And mm -hmm. to wait to see how everything plays out. They still have their guns, though. Okay. By the way, just to keep track. Yes. I've heard that. I've heard that. Exasperated side, Dan jumps off the into the water again. <laughs> Dan had circled <laughs> back around, climbed onto their ship, and was going to do some Pirates of the Caribbean style, you know, disconnect the ship, try and get away, you know. Even the odds of it, but I've seen Blindside. I don't know if I how I know Anushka's flown away, but I've heard Anushka flown away, and I've heard Anon of Big Willie give a speech about not fighting, and Connor giving a speech about surrendering. So, God damn it! Jumps back in the water, swims away uh, again. I mean, I'll, I will say because we kind of uh, we've been doing this in the margins but I will say that when you get up there you see that it seems like the only armed crew that are left on this barge are these three crossbowmen who are currently in the process of reloading um you don't you only had one success so they realize that you're there when you get up onto the deck but they're not really armed to do much about mm -hmm. it they do have swords at their waist so they could drop their crossbows and face you there's only three of them yeah no no I, I've taken the measure in my accounting when you had them firing at uh, Anushka. But at, at the Anushka. same time, if no one's going to be fighting but me, then that's what I said, exasperated sigh, hearing yep. the, the speeches about not fighting, we surrender, don't fight them back, blah, 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 blah. Ah, swimming is exhausting. Jump back a lot. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, so Dan um, decides that this is, you know, 
not where this time jumps back in the water the uh you've drawn the attention of the crossbowmen who are going to turn and run to the far side of the barge and say you know where do you go um they still have a round to reload though so you're not in imminent danger right What's now the rules on uh how long you can hold your breath I want oh, to say it has uh, to do with your it, body it, die. It's it's for a few minutes unless you're fighting. Yeah, because then I would say that when I jump in the water, I submerge and try and get as far as I can under. Yeah, as opposed um, to swimming on the surface. Because did you pass your swimming test? I assume I'm roading. Yeah, yeah. If they if they let you road, yeah. I, yeah, that's yeah. why I said you I used the word assume. This. The roughest river. Yeah, right. So you would have what one success? Yeah. Yeah, then you would be underwater for about what a trained swimmer would be for like a minute or two. Right. But the fact that I'm not moving fast means that they'd have a lot of turns to shoot at me. So I'd rather be un I'd rather be submerged. Well, what what would happen is it's night. You would jump into the Mississippi River. Have you seen the Mississippi River? Yeah. yeah what's the, do you know what the nickname is for the Mississippi River? I don't remember. Big Muddy. Uh, I just okay. thought it was a very dark appearance. Yeah, th th this is the same kind of climate situation. The Rhineland's also very muddy. Right. So you would dive into, you know, water that is opaque. Okay, meanwhile, these guys would all be concentrated in the boat and shooting at me. Little Miss Obvious. Well, uh, again, that's why I said I would submerge and yeah, right. trying to power yeah. swim across the surface. Right, you would then move several yards and then come back up. So they, while they conceivably could notice you, there's no lights on you. All the lights are on our boat. Um, the boat is the prize because they're here to claim the boat and the person. So you're not a priority target. So even though they might see you, the odds of one of them taking a pot shot at you were pretty low. Right. Well, again, my concern was more that you're super fast. You'll get out of their range or any conceivable range right. that they'd want to shoot at you in the, like three turns. I'm moving a pace a turn. So if yeah. they spot me or even want to make shots in the dark, I am a lot more threatened. So, right. So you may actually made good time. Do you actually have stealth? No. Okay. Well, then it's up to uh, the GM, first of all, to see if anyone on the boat actually spots you. And then secondly, to see if they actually shoot at you. Is there yeah. are there any rules for shooting creatures submerged underwater? Uh yeah, you get cover from the water and concealment from the water. Nice. Uh so you you already have cover because only your head is above water and you're probably going <clears throat> you're only servicing to breathe, right? Right, yeah. but if I could hold my breath for a minute at a time then that's right. a well, number. The first thing to do is see if anybody on the boat spots you. So you could roll their mind and observation. What species are the people on the boat? They're cats. Which yep. means they so do they're... have... Well, in this case, yeah, they... the water is going to be your cover dice, not they the dark. They do have but... night vision, but yeah. they don't... Uh, they're not shore creatures. So yeah, so you could just... You know, there's a lookout. You could roll mind and observation. If there's multiples, you could roll extra d8s. Like, I usually don't roll for all four or five guys because that's kind of silly. I roll for one guy, and if there's like two or three or four watchmen, you just give the watchman a d8. Or 2d8 assist bonus. Right, that's a good way to abstract it a little bit, so I think that's not bad. So you just roll. They might, they might come um, up all yep. once. Yep, yep. Because your um, typicals are only rolling d6s. If right. they're elite, they're rolling d8. Yeah, no, th these guys are typicals, so it's going to be um, d6s, and I'm just trying to yeah, see. It, it they're not short creatures, right? So they're not getting species, so it's going to be yeah. 1d6 and 2d8. Yeah, so roll that. We got a three. Okay. We got two successes. That's two successes. He's a typical swimmer escaping. One success is enough to do something uh, a skilled person could do to his train. I mean, we, we could look this up, but who cares? It's like two successes. Hey, they spotted him. Would they take a shot at him? I think one of them would. Yeah. Is it an opposed or a resisted? To spot me. Uh, it's usually I would just do this as successes. Duels are supposed to really be for combat roles. Um. If and, I'm, just, and, I'm just looking at this from a I still have, whoa, a speed die and a concealment going, die. 
speed. He's going to miss you because by the time swimming. he sees you, you're at least at right. What? Right. I'm just saying I have a speed die and a concealment die. If I tied with him, they wouldn't see me because I'd be a defender in muddy, dark water. Right. That's true. Uh, yeah. uh, it, it, GM, it's your call. He has two successes. Does he see him or not? I haven't rolled. That's I'd like to. I'd like to give him a roll. I, All right. Yeah, I'd I'll like him to. Here. Can't oppose nothing, right? He has two successes against. I haven't rolled. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, give us a roll. I could see. You know, you don't have any stealth dice, but you do have concealment from the water. Um, and it's gross water. So what's the? I feel uh, like that's a D. Die? I would say a D10. In the book, you don't use D10s that much, but um, well, but yeah. I tried. Okay. Okay. So um, in this case, you're spotted. They're going to take a shot at you. Um, they're in the, they've just reloaded, so they're going to uh, take an aim and a shoot. Um, you get Cover for the water. Let's see. Waste high barrier shield. I'll give you a fair cover, right? 50% sort of. So you can take a D8 bonus to your cover. And you're going to take a D12 bonus for range. So it's... <laughs> okay, so it's going to be 2D6 and a D12 to hit. And it was very nearly, very nearly a botch. And four is the high. So you'd be dodging with... You got it. I'm just throwing my shield on there as the D8 cover from the water. Makes sense. Okay, but you got a six. So yeah, an arrow will plink right to the right of you, uh, making a loud sploosh into the water. Um, but at this point, you're going to be out of medium range going forward, which means you'll get 2d12 if they decide to continue shooting at you. Uh, but I think that, that wraps up that turn. All right. Meanwhile, on the boat, um, I kind of forgot where we left negotiations <laughs> with Connor. Uh, Anushka has fled. Um, these guys want to know what your cargo is, but they also want the uh, the wolves to lower their weapons. I guess we can say that the doctor's attempt to negotiate with the wolves was enough for them to put their weapons down. Um on the deck so we can just proceed here and doesn't need to take unlimited turns. All right. So yes, the commander is going to tell Connor. Um, so what is it that you're trying to transport across these waters? We have a parcel of muskets bound for our war with the Rinaldi, the Jacoba. He scoffs. He says, there is no... The Avoir de Par not at war with the Rinaldi. But the Rinaldi are at war with my family. This is interesting news for him, but it doesn't actually, I guess, matter that much in the grand scheme of things from his worldview perspective. Uh, he says... Um... Well, let's see. You are a noble, you probably would want to, he'd want to, to ransom you, but then he would have to take into account your entire party. Um, oh, he's going to arrest you. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, um, I mean, think of this from his POV. How does he get paid? Yeah, by turning in a, a criminal. <laughs> and yeah right. but turning in a criminal or someone who has a ransom plus also that's a war wagon so that's worth like you know a couple hundred and then they're going to discover all the guns yeah they're on the verge of discovering all the guns you so, are yeah. a big fat prize now the K club over here hates your guts because you just surrendered uh, without bloodshed, you know, just like rolled over. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I'm guessing they hate your guts because I'm guessing they were willing to shed blood for this. But um, yeah, so no, they're going to arrest you, impound all your stuff. And um, I mean, by the, the Dolaro, 
I mean, I have to reinforce, these guys are the heroes of their own story. Woohoo, we captured a guy who's worth a lot of money and we can sell all the guns for money. We drink well tonight. These guys are high-fiving each other. Yeah, basically. And we didn't have, and no one had to get killed. Yeah, and I think that is, we could play this out one step at a time, but I think that that's where we're heading, unless you guys decide that you want to interrupt at some point. Oh, I think for the benefit of our listeners, we should do this as slowly as possible. <laughs> Drawing out every single mechanic we possibly Okay, I'll be okay. So what's the, forward at a 90 degree angle and what's the minutia of the conversation that uh Big Willie and Curie have together for every hour of sail back to wherever these guys had port? Well right. yeah, I, first I start by pulling out the chat book. Yeah, I will say that you are not endearing, you have not endeared yourselves to these wolves. I like the K Club. I think that's a great nomiker, so we can go with that. Uh, they, um, yeah, uh, specifically, I think of all of them, Clock seems even grumpier than usual, as you guys are told, as they are told to uh, surrender their arms. Um, as are the rest of you. The first thing you're going to do is take off any weapons that you guys would have on you. Now, of course, Anushka and uh, Dan, you guys are exempt from this. Anushka, well, you flew I'm not off. There. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you guys yeah. are out, right? Because That's, because yeah. we flew off. I'm going to fly to the shore and see if I can uh, help Dan out of the river. Yeah, um, Dan, you make it to the far side of the river, and um, in the darkness, you can see the lights. You can hear maybe conversation, but you can't make out. You know, or barked orders, but you can't make out exactly what they're saying. But it's pretty clear that fighting has not broke out, and it sounds like and, it will not. Well, I knew and fighting we'll... wasn't broken out because I, I abandoned ship a second time because I heard that they were surrendering. You heard it wasn't breaking. Yeah. yeah. Are yeah. you um, um? And you have climbing, right? Because you're a lemur. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, once again, to reinforce the um, Mississippi metaphor, you know, the edges of this river are going to be like those trees clinging to grass, and then those sharks mind oh yeah no no mm. it's cat it is a horrible situation um, to try and dig your way up yeah i, out, I so. think at this point uh it might be best for the doctor to go ahead and do his negotiation now of yeah i'm really just a priest and i'm a pacifist i'm not here to fight you at all i'm going willingly and i'm under church authority also are you coward. also going to point out you're a doloro native and i'm a doloro native <laughs> Which of course, has the, which has the great pause where they're going to sit here and say, "Yeah, about that right of clergy thing." You know, we're pagans, right? So we don't necessarily <laughs> recognize the. That's okay, the blessed love me. I'm an insider with them. Oh shit! Yeah, there you go. I've been holding on to that for like forever. <laughs> but you are you going to claim to be a blessing of Lutara? I am going to claim I have the ins on them, and I am in fact favored amongst them. Uh, I mean, like this is funny because this undermines everything I said. Because the idea that the clergy have different laws than the um, secular is a uh, sonair conceit. It's not a Lutheran conceit. <laughs> gotcha. So these guys ultimately do is. follow the blessed, right? <laughs> like they well, are it, lower it, on the it, totem pole. It's your call. Even though they're flying the, I mean, I don't, who's the, we'll find out when we meet their leader. Because even though they're flying the colors of the Doloro, you guys heard the phrase flag of convenience before? Yep. Right. It could just be, we want to raid people on the river. Who will give us a writ? And then the, and then the Biscuit, they say, we'll give you a writ, but we want you to, but we want to charge you terms that would make Comcast or iHeart Channel blush. Because we want all your money and give you nothing. And I say, that's bogus. What about you, Aberdepaw? And the Aberdepaw say, why are you writing to us, you mercenary scum? We're not going to give you anything. <laughs> and then they went, Dolores, what will you guys offer us? And Dolores said, well, all we right. hate the other two guys. All right. So, so we'll give you fair and reasonable terms if you fly our colors. Good enough for us. Now we get to arrest people in the name of the crown, which is better than trying to, which means we're not technically outlaws. The Dolores said we could do this. And someone's paying you. Right. Yep. So, so that's what it could be. But if they have a Doloro noble with them, like an actual blooded noble. Um, I mean, remember, the only difference between them and Connor is nothing. 
I always, I, I right. love being so cynical like this because it's like so, I know gamers want everything to be determinist, but it's not that easy. All right. So at least for the doctor's role here, I got three yeah. dice to advocate for, which is of course career. Hey, yeah, I'm a priest. Pacifist. Yeah, I'm literally not going to fight you. I'm not a problem. Uh, and of course, inside with the blessed, which would also represent being native at this point. I mean, yeah, you don't have a I believable will... ransom. You're not worth it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just. I'm a person who's not even going to fight you. I'm one of your countrymen. I'm literally just trying to deliver a letter. <laughs> so I will definitely give you a uh, pacifist and insider with the looterists. I feel like if you are claiming insider with looterism, then you are kind of, it's like cross purposes to also say, oh, and I'm a priest. I'm like a holy okay. of. So Solomon. we'll just go with the insider then. Yeah. So there we go. So let's let's give it a roll. Four dice, and that is two successes. I like it. Okay, this is, we're going to roll 2d6 for them because... Is this the same day or a different day? Uh, since when? It, since since we got on the boat and did that negotiation. It's the same oh, day. Oh, right, I guess. Um. Right, right. Um, well, I want to fast forward a little bit. But I guess that you could have had this conversation with them. If you were going to try to escape capture, you would have been doing it on the raft when they were taking you guys captive. Yeah, no, I so. mean, I mean, when did we get off the boat to when we got ambushed, is what I mean. This is uh, got onto it, got onto it. Sorry, got onto the <laughs> boat to when you got ambushed. Yeah, the I mean, the crossing probably wouldn't take more than an hour or, or probably okay. less. So no, like basically, hour, same so. day as the or for earlier negotiation. I don't have yeah. that. That was the main question. Gotcha, okay, gotcha. So yeah, I'm rolling with two. Let's see what we get. Okay, and you got two. Um, once again, this guy's negotiating with his two d six. What if the so, doctor could, pissed himself to use his coward? Damn. Dice. It's a tie. He did roll higher. I think that you are gonna um, be. I mean, he's got coward, and he also has anonymous. So when he could say, "I'm not anyone of any importance," you know, he has anonymous, <laughs> which backs that up. I mean, seriously, that is true. How about those two? <laughs> I mean. Okay, I will. I'd give you a bonus D eight for anonymous if you want to roll one more. <laughs> I know this guy. This is Big Willie. <laughs> I've heard of uh, you. You know, I'm gonna throw my personality onto this as well. What's cool. your personality? Hey, uh, my personality, just to go back up top, is evangelical. Look, I'm just here to save souls, and obviously, his needs a lot of saving. <laughs> This is when you find out if they're pagans. Why would you save souls? People reincarnate. Are you hoarding souls? <laughs> <laughs> well, what obviously, I have to lead for? them to a better life in the next life. Um, so it seems at first that they are committed to taking you all in together, everyone that they've caught. Whether or not you are of any value to be determined, but it is clear as you press that you are going to be more of a nuisance than anything else. Um, <laughs> and one of the men pipes up and says, it's awful bad luck, sir, to, uh, well, to imprison uh, one favored by the blessed, we should probably just, and the commander says, like, fine, cut him loose. Um, we'll drop you ashore and uh, yeah. Basically, that's the long and short of it. Drop you ashore, and we'll take your your friends into captivity. Um, it becomes clear at this point that um, they don't intend to change course. They were bound for Triskelion, and Triskelion is where they will uh, look to offload you. Um, yeah, he, he might not be their only prisoner. It's very true. So currently... Everyone, save the Doctor, Anushka, and Dan have been imprisoned. Doctor, you're dropped off unceremoniously on the far bank. Um, one one more note. Uh, Lael, he is my ward, of course. Oh, of course, yes. Um, we're going to say that the allies are package deals. They're okay. probably non-human or non, non-people for the purpose of these negotiations. So, That's yeah, perfectly fine. Potter ends them. up with Connor and Lael ends up exactly. with me. That's all I need to know. I mean, yep. they're yeah, these these guys are going to Triskelion where their goal is they have Connor and first of all, they took your good. So they're going to sell those for money. Mm -hmm. That that we know. Secondly, Connor is a believable ransom because, you know, they're thinking like, well, we could go put him in jail 
Uh, he's worth something to, uh, since the Dolaro and the Average Bar are at war, he's worth something. Um, because you guys know that, like, like they do, they do trades, right? Like, hey, we've captured your king. It's like, well, what if we gave you 20 of your princes back? And they say, make it 30, and you've got a deal. You guys know about that stuff, right? Sure, sure. Yeah. Like, are we in tra trade territory trading. now? Because Connor was wanted before anything else, too. Because remember, well, he... uh, what's his name? De La Vega wants him mm -hmm. for what he did back in... God, I guess where he's going. I can't remember. And, and that's a minor problem. Right, I'm going to point yeah. out, that's a minor problem if they take Connor Galeon, because they might make yeah. inquiries, hey, you know, like when they make landfall, they say, okay, somebody go to the constabulary and, and give them this list of names. Uh, uh, Connor, you know, give them the, and see if any of these guys have a reward. So that's going to be a minor problem. That's why we have to spring Connor out of jail first. Yeah, because Connor is screwed every which way. Because he is the yeah. hero of Harmono. He fought there better than Harmon did. He yeah. saved them against a Doloro militia army. He already <laughs> had wanted bounty uh, signs hanging up in the Doloro capital of Bruges. He's wanted by a Triskelion. They're heading to Triskelion. <laughs> They're already a Dolaro force. He is yeah. screwed six ways to Sunday. Well, no, oh, yeah. it, it's see, I, I'm going to put like you know, my glass is half full because it's like, I mean, like it's funny because you, we talk about this being Game of Thrones. Screwed is in. Well, they haven't put him to the sword and killed him. That would be screwed. Right, right. Uh, I bet more than negotiation points are the guys who want him have everything to do with the guys that have him. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, De if he wants, De La Vega probably wants to put him to the sword. And that's why we can't let him fall into De La Vega's hands. But that, this is, this is where this gets fun for me because this is like intrigue. Because it's like, yes, but the Dolaro might, you know, use this as negotiating leverage because, you know, they don't like the Rinaldi. So they might say, look, if you really want Connor, what are you going to give us for him? And it's like, well, he's a criminal. It's like, we don't care. What do you? What will you? You know, like these guys might extort money out of him, which is both good and bad. Well, the concern there is that they're currently sailing towards Triskelion, not towards their own territory. But that's yeah. the problem. I mean, like, what? But but they're they will guard Connor. So if if uh, De La Vega wants him, De La Vega would have to show up in force, and the Dolaro might say, you know, if you attack us in force, we'll consider this an act. of war and put out a warrant for your arrest. I mean, sure, you might kill Connor because I've and lots of people will die, but that's state crap. That's just, you know, people die. Sure. But you did uh, point I mean, out that they're here for a payday. When they hit Triskelion, they're probably going to discover that there's a bounty for this guy. No reason to yeah, bring him back up with it. them. Yeah, if right. I mean, if they that, can get paid. I, I would agree right there. They will, they will almost definitely unload him, which means we have to spring Connor uh, either before or in Triskelion. Um, and um, fortunately, uh, now what happened to Connor's ally? Who's Connor's ally? Potter. 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 I assume Potter is, Potter is just with him. Potter has been captured. Okay, so Potter has also been captured. Damn it. Because if Potter wasn't captured, we could try to recruit irregulars in the city to help Connor. Um, because your ally can help recruit regular. Remember, the ally is specifically an assist mm -hmm. bonus with that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, because we, we just make inquiries. Hey, Connor's been captured. Do you want to go free him? And there might be locals who say, "Well, I don't know Connor, but he's the hero of harmony." Uh, and you know, he's and also I'll do anything that screws over the Triskelion. People. By the uh, way, just to get it on uh, the audio side. Should we perhaps change the uh, the goal from escort the the goods to Femaroos to rescue mm. Connor? Well, that that, that I mean yeah, that yeah. goal we fail, so it's gonna yeah. disappear from the list. The goods are gone, so that 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 goal is gone. Replace it then. I'm just saying to get it on record. Should we perhaps? Are you going to give us the goal yeah. to rescue Connor, or should we just let his character run in jail? <laughs> run in jail. Uh, that's a good well, question. Well, he owe me a few hundred dinar. I've been keeping a bill here. It sounds like that's a good goal. Um, and it's also something where, unless Connor feels like rolling up a new character, if you guys do leave him in jail, he's kind of checked out of the story. So, uh, or well, I do have a new character, but I do want to try to see if we can't get Connor out of prison. 
There you go. So uh, let's yes, do the that. risk that everybody dies to save your character. Yeah. I think we can get Connor out. We've got. At least we don't know. have to do it on another boat. Um. Well, <laughs> now that we're in the city, no, I, I think. Uh, I mean, once they let the priest go, and we ask him, "So what happened? Is Connor still alive?" And you can say, "Yeah, he's been taken in." And 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 then the and then you'll tell us. Okay, they're mercenaries. They're flying the Dolaro. I mean, like, like, are they Dolaro or are they Mercs? And you'll say they're Mercs, and we'll go, well, crap, because that means they will turn them in for the bounty. If they were Dolaro loyalists, there might be a chance they might negotiate. But it sounds to me like they're just going to dump it. They are taking the river. I think they'll get there first, won't they? Uh, well, this would be after they've. They, do they drop uh, the doctor off on the shore before he gets to Triskelion, or they just let him yeah. go in Triskelion? I well, I assume. I guess I was assuming that they would just take a like a yeah, basically just drop the doctor off in that same encounter, um, mm -hmm. let him go with the rest of you guys. Throw him overboard well, because, for him for sure. Uh, so, <laughs> in, in other words, they've lashed your boat. And then they and then they anchor, and then somebody probably gets gets out a dinghy or throws the doctor overboard or something. Yeah. Uh, it since since they may be pagans, they may still believe in the reed, which is as you uh, do so comes back to you threefold. Uh, they, right, yeah. they might decide it's bad luck. It's probably bad luck to kill a priest. <laughs> yeah. so I was just thinking so. that if even by following that standard, that it would be better to let him go in a populated city and not press charges than to drop him off in the middle of nowhere to fend for himself. Yeah, but they but they might mm. also decide he's just bad luck to get around. I mean, look at him. Yeah, yeah I can't I'm terrible. That. I mean, yeah. when, he, when he says, I'm not with them, the, the, the guys probably say, look, you can be with them so we can find, you know, sell you for ransom, or we can ditch you in the middle of nowhere. And I think the doctor chooses to be ditched in the middle, of, in nowhere. middle of nowhere. Yeah. I also think that the no name anonymous thing cuts both ways as you can be like, Hey, I'm nobody. I think also it doesn't make sense to fear much reprisal from someone who has no claim to anyone or anything. Right. So, so they would ditch him. Yeah. I think I they mean, just ditch you. He doesn't have any title, so he's not worth anything, but he is a soul and he claims, and he claims some sort he of claims belief souls. into heaven and the supernatural. And speaking as a guy who kills for a living, let's get the supernatural as far away from us as <laughs> possible. Mm. <laughs> then just to go back over again, he did negotiate for Lael to be released along with him, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, so 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 in other words, they dump him and who else on the shore? Lael, his ally. Lael, yep. Lael, okay, so, so they dump the, you the two The Phelan guy. The Phelan wolf yeah. boy, and right. I think all of the K-Club is still in in custody, I, I, and I think, think Connor is... So. Yeah, Connor's ally uh, and regulars as well. Uh, we haven't really spoken about them, but I assume that they would be with you guys also. Uh, they'll probably well. We we actually they're not here. It might be easier just to say once again they're irregulars. When they right. said, "Hey guys, we're going to take a black market ferry across a river when we're not maybe they did. The irregulars might have said, "Okay, bye. Yeah. We'll see you later, boss." Because the irregulars <laughs> came yeah. from. Um... Uh, Harrogate, Harrogate, right? Yeah, so yeah. they're not his typical uh, Femmerouge knights that he's typically... Yeah, they weren't fighters with. either or anything, so... Yeah. Once again, I always remind people, the name is Irregular. It's like, have fun doing your black market deal in the middle of the night, boss. Yeah, 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 no, I was just making the point that typically he's wandering around with, like, knights loyal to his house. They're Irregulars, but they still have some, some bearing on him. Right. This time he recruited a bunch of randos from uh, Harrogate. Yeah, so, so, so they might have said if we meet later, you know, if we meet later, yeah. huzzah. Um, so, yeah. So we, and they weren't on the boat anyway. So I, I would assume they probably just... Yeah, I mean, to be fair, he hasn't recruited anybody this session yet. And it was the start of the session. Quick, who else sure. is on the boat? Well, that's why I said <laughs> we might be able to recruit people in Triskelion. Like, we might be, like, maybe some of those guys might have showed up in Triskelion. Maybe some of the people who knew him, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, they could recruit role for jail. But we don't here. have him... Or his ally. So, but anyway, mm -hmm. so the doc in other words, long story short, they dump the doctor on the shore, and the doctor will tell us, you know, when I ask, so are they loyalists or they mercenaries? And you'll tell me they're mercenaries. And it's like, well, crap. Okay, well, here's the deal. They're gonna have to, they'll take him to Triskelion. They're not gonna surrender him immediately because they don't want to get ripped off. That would be my guess. Because you don't just like bring him on shore, they're Dolaro. If they brought him to the constables, the constables say, thank you, 
and we'll take him off your hands and give you nothing. Instead, they would go find the warrant and then properly process it, which would take time. So right, that means they're doing black work. He would be on. Connor would be on the boat. Um, because uh, uh, I'm also guessing that um, if they would only take him off the boat and store him somewhere if they had somewhere to store him. If they're mercenaries, they probably don't. They can't store him at the Doloro Embassy because they're not diplomats. And they probably, you know, what are they going to do? Put him up at some flop house somewhere? I mean, right. if they're going to do something with the war wagon, then they might be looking for a place to store stuff. You they're just probably keep it just on the gonna, flop wagon, of course. They're probably just going to sell the war wagon. I mean, they had to take it apart to get it on their boat. Anyway. So, um, but they're yeah, probably... when they go through the war wagon, they're going to find the guns and they're going to find what they actually have to, that they're working with now. Oh, yeah, oh, no, yeah. They, they are so happy because they were like, wow, guns. Do we keep Jackpot. They're probably arguing about whether they're going to keep them or sell them right. What, um, what was their boat, by the way? I think I missed uh, They had a barge. Barge. They had a, okay, they had a barge. Yeah, they're, and we they're had carrying. A flat boat. Yeah, with a log breaker. Yeah. Uh, with a log jam breaker. That's what it is, boss. It's a log jam breaker. It's not a ram prowl, so we can. We're, we're not by <laughs> river pirate. No, I was just are, thinking that if they're going to keep them out there for long periods of time and they have their own crew, that they're basically exposed to the elements for long periods of time on a boat in the the, the well, Bay of Triskelion. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're stored in straw and that sort of... But I mean, like, so, moving on from there. Th yeah, they the guns are the big prize, and Connor is a prize. I no, no, sorry. When I said they are exposed, I meant the people, not the guns. Hmm. So, do we know what Connor's bounty is? Oh, I gotta look it up. You we saw it in Street out. Corners Forge recently, so. Right, right. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I was thinking way back when you first saw it in Bruges when you met the doctor. Oh. And no. it might have changed because we've been gone for like three weeks. You also pissed off uh, De La Vega since then too at the the tournament. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so when we get to the city, okay. So here's my proposal: we can find out that he's almost definitely going to be on the boat when he gets back. So we need to get on the boat and get him off the boat. Uh, none. Um. Uh. Let's see. The doctor and I have some capacity with vehicles. Dan, you're mostly a hand-to-hand -hand person, but you can climb and swim, right? Mm hmm Okay. So the theory would be that when they dock the boat, that we find their boat. And they might even dock it. They might leave it out there in the open. I mean, they're not a seafaring boat, but they might leave it out there on the water, which means we would have to get on a dinghy, take that to the boat, liberate Connor and, and Potter, uh, and then get back to landfall without drowning it. Um, or we can I mean, steal the boats. We can't steal Piracy. the entire. We we can't steal the entire barge because um we, we've only done that once before and we crashed it immediately. <laughs> well, that's I can crash it again. That's not necessarily a, a a bad idea, but but um what we're doing is already like illegal. I'm just saying, and, if we steal the boat, we're gonna fall back to your original plan of just sailing all the way around to Feverus. Well, no, actually, I don't think we could crew the boat. I think, like, stealing the boat and then crashing it on landfall and then abandoning it is also an option, because we don't care if their boat sinks. Mm -hmm. It's not our boat. Uh, exactly. Additional problem is that they're all armed with ranged oh, yeah, the, the, weapons. There were at least a dozen of them. Right, so, I don't mean, it's a barge sneaking aboard. and It's going to be hard. Sneaking aboard would be... Easier than assaulting. No, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm not saying the difficulty of any plan is going to be easy. I'm just saying that yeah. sneaking aboard is going to be hard, especially if you're rowing a dinghy out to mm -hmm. them. Yeah, and, and they will, but they might have uh, they might have a leaner crew because we only saw a dozen of them. When they do landfall, they have to process well, warrants, get that kind of stuff. Some people are going to want to be at liberty because some people don't want to like. We are dealing with a lot of hypotheticals right now. I think at least the first thing to do is to just go to the city. Right. We're going to have to happens. get to the city. And unfortunately, that probably means I need to go to the city ahead of you guys because I travel a lot faster. 
I'm also right. not a known associate with this criminal gang that you formed. And neither mm-hmm. is Doctor, because nobody knows who he is. Yep. So, Dan, I guess we're having it together. And I have low profile, so even if people do know who uh, that he has an associate, people don't remember me. So, see? <laughs> Anonymous and low profile here. Nobody Anonymous cares. Low profile <laughs> and some random guy. <laughs> yeah, recently uh, based. Which, which does come on. Well, except you've been in the big money. Yeah, yeah. you're covered in mud now. Which, though, you got to remember, before that, I was sleeping on top of trials of trash. So, still, mm. still an improvement. The smell is gone. I don't know. Yeah, but you've been in the river, so it's back. It's now, a different smell. Like the river. <laughs> It it it's a it's a musky, uh, moldy smell, right? Because you get the the algae and everything piling up on the muddy shore, but it's still yeah. it's not natural trash or the you know the feces of the sewer, of the gutter rather. You you've traded one smell for another. Uh, speaking as a forest creature, I'm not, I'm still not impressed. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, but hey. It, it work. It works for you, Dan. Um. So, uh, yeah. My suggestion. Then I guess I should ditch you guys and get. Do you guys have money? Uh, I have a little bit of money. I don't even have pockets. Okay. Because <laughs> you guys could try to fetch a coach and try to get back to town faster. I don't have that much money. Um. Well, I'll be in walking. The, in the interest of saving, uh, um. In the interest of saving uh, Connor, who was always done right by me, take this 24 dinar. All right. Also, conceivably, if you're flying that way, you could also spot anything in any open top barge that happens to be floating around the harbor. Uh, yeah. I mean, once we get there, uh, it's going to be, it's Triskelion. It's one of the biggest cities in the world. There's going to be a gazillion barges there. Right, but I mean, um, sure, but you're also pretty good vision. No, wait, you're a bat. Uh, no, actually, once again, that's a myth. We actually have excellent. Um, I'm a micro bat. Well, you know the thing about myths, a lot of people believe them. Uh, yes, a lot of people believe things. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm just saying, sure, there's going to be a lot of barges out there. I mean, there'll what be a lot of barges there. But it's important to know they're flying Dolaro colors, so that would be... And they would probably keep those when they do landfall. At the very so, least, I'm just saying that you could verify yeah. if that barge is in the harbor somewhere, and possibly right. even if Connor is still on board. And they're probably rotating crew, which means they're moving for our hours. So time is of the essence. So I'm going to go ahead and head to town and scout out in advance. I'm giving you some money. Go ahead and get your guys a good square meal and a wagon and, or a carriage. Preferably a night one, uh, even though they travel slower, it's still travel and rush to get to Triskelion. Uh, I will see you there. Stay alive no matter what occurs. I need to get to the town and find out where he is. And I think Connor has some friends in high places. I mean, the Dolaro, not the Dolaro, the Avertebois Embassy would also be a place to stop. Indeed. Well, I'll stay alive and, well, pleasant journeys. Um, may peace be with you. And uh, I will take to the sky. Take to wing. All right. Uh, this might be a good opportunity to take a quick break. I was literally about uh, to ask you, this is normally the point you take it. And also, yeah. things seem to have gone off the rails a little bit. And you might need a little bit of <laughs> I did. A this little bit. I think it's dramatic. I... Yeah. yeah. This is the kind of stuff I live for. Right. Be back right. in a minute then. Okay. So be right back. <laughs> 